Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. Let's take a look at this Filtrox 40mm f2.5 lens. When I'm recording this video, this lens is only available for the Nikon Z mount. But I have a feeling that in the near future this will also become available, at least for the Sony E mount. Here are some pictures that I shot on the Viltrox 40mm f2.5 and the Nikon Z5 camera. Please enjoy! This is a tiny little lens. This weighs less than 200 grams with the lens hood attached and the filter thread is 52 millimeters. So this is a very compact lightweight lens and suitable for travel, street and for any situation whenever you don't want to carry too much weight on you. I've been using this lens on the Nikon Z5 camera body and at least mounted on this camera body. The lens feels very nicely balanced and a joy to use. The build quality feels very decent, especially when you consider the price, which is less than 160 US dollars at the time of recording this video. The feature set is very basic. There is only the focus ring, but no other controls like buttons or aperture rings or anything. The exterior is some sort of quite decent feeling plastic, but the mount is metal. There is no weather ceiling, but I don't think you can expect that for that price. Let's look at some more pictures that I shot on this fantastic Viltrox 40mm f2.5 lens. autofocus is very reliable and all the Nikon focusing modes, at least all the Z5 focusing modes seem to work just fine. However, the focusing speed is not quite as snappy as it is on some of the most ex more expensive lenses. However, I never experienced any problems or issues with the autofocus and all my pictures came out correctly focused and if I missed the focus a couple of times it was my fault, not the camera's fault. I was just a little bit too hasty to hit the shutter and uh, did not have the patience to make sure the camera was properly focused. When it comes to sharpness and testing new lenses, I never make any lab tests, I never make any measurements, I just shoot the way I shoot and eyeball the pictures uh, in Lightroom and if the pictures look fine, then I'm happy. And I'm very happy with this Viltrox 40mm f2.5 lens. It's very sharp, even wide open, but it gets slightly better if you stop down just a little bit to about f4, f5.6. But even at the minimum or maximum aperture f16, the results are still pretty decent. There is not too much diffraction present and I would not hesitate to use f16 if I needed uh, all the depth of field I can get for whatever reason. And also I would never hesitate to shoot wide open on this lens, the results are fantastic. I can see minimal amount of lateral chromatic aberrations and almost no longitudinal chromatic aberrations. Excellent result for such an inexpensive lens and easy to correct in post if necessary. Now let's take a look at some photos that I shot on this lens because in the end it's the photos that count. The 
there is something weird going on when it comes to distortions. Whenever I turn on the in-camera distortion correction or in Lightroom I turn on the lens profile for this lens, I get quite strong pincushion type distortion. However, if I turn off the in-camera correction or the Lightroom lens profile, then I can see pretty much no distortions. So I would say that uh, when the corrections are turned off, there are no visible distortions. I don't know what is going on with the lens profiles either in camera or in Lightroom, but if you are shooting on this lens on your Nikon Z camera, turn off all the corrections and you are going to get uh, really nice distortion-free results. It seems like the vignetting is also nicely under control. But then again, this is a 40 millimeter lens with the maximum aperture of f2.5, so the vignetting never should be any kind of a problem with this kind of a modest maximum aperture. You can, in some circumstances, you can definitely see some vignetting if you shoot wide open, but I never found it any kind of a problem in any situation. And if you want to get rid of the vignetting, stop down just a little bit and you can't see it anymore. But I also have to say a minor disclaimer here. I actually like a little bit of vignetting and I don't mind if my lenses are vignetting. So if you are very sensitive to vignetting, you might disagree with me on this. This lens is also not any kind of a bokeh monster because of the relatively modest f2.5 maximum aperture. However, you can definitely get some soft blurry background if you are relatively close to your subject. And the quality of the background is quite nice to my eyes at least. It's not the smoothest, best looking bokeh I have ever seen, but if you consider the sort of the nature of this lens and the price point of this lens, I think the bokeh result is quite, quite nice looking. However, there's one optical area where this lens does not shine, and that is backlight. If you shoot into the sun or any uh, bright light source, you may get results that are not so pretty. I never found it a real problem in my shooting, but it's good to bear in mind and uh, good to pay attention if you use this lens and shoot into the sun or into any bright light source. Let's look at some more pictures that I shot on this fantastic Viltrox 40mm f2.5 lens. I think for less than 160 US dollars, this lens is a no-brainer for any Nikon Z user. Except if you already own the pretty fantastic Nikkor 40mm f2 lens, then this may not make sense on top of that. However, if you don't own the Nikkor yet, but you'd like to get a 40mm lens for your Nikon Z camera body, I think this lens is definitely worth a look. This is only f2.5 and the Nikkor is f2, but in real life that difference is not too uh, big and this is almost half the price of the Nikkor. So there you have it, my thoughts on the Filtrox 40mm f2.5 lens for Nikon Z mount cameras. If you found this video useful or helpful, please do consider buy buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below for that if you don't live in Finland. Thank you so much and I'll definitely see you soon in the next video.